okay so this is uh, lecture 18 okay so in the last class we began to look at the case when there is a channel and uh, you cannot make your received signal orthogonal uh, when when your uh, when your symbols are going through the channel okay so that's the situation i saw how did i how did i write it down okay so you have some bits i want to remind you of how it works some bits you're converting it using some mapper to some through some constellation to a symbol sequence sk and maybe k between 0 and l minus 1 okay so l symbol sequences drawn from the alphabet okay so there are quite a few of them now and then what am i doing i'm putting it through a transmit filter gt and then that's going to go through the channel ct and then noise gets added to it okay and then we're we trying to figure out what to do here okay so this r of t i wrote as uh, summation uh, k equals 0 to l minus 1 sk h of t minus kt plus nt okay so so like i said for some reason this h of t minus kt do not form a orthogonal set of signals okay so maybe you can't control your g of t suitably whatever you don't know c of t right and this h of t works out to what h of t is g of t convolved with c of t which is probably an unknown channel okay so remember c of t is the complex baseband equivalent of a passband frequency it can be that also so in general h of t is going to be complex okay so i'm not going to ask uh, require that to be real and like i said it's not orthonormal okay so whether it's orthonormal or not the first thing to do in a receiver is always to find an orthonormal basis for your set of signals and project that's the first and nice thing to do okay but it turns out when you deal with this in practice and receivers the algorithms get very ugly okay and you usually don't do very clean neat projections and all that usually it's not done it's always approximate it's always adaptive you do a lot of things and it's it seems complicated so that's why i don't want to do that first okay. so there is a way to do that also in this situation and we'll do it later okay first i want to write down some expressions and bring up some heuristics get you thinking about those things and deal with ugly looking expressions in the receivers because that's what's usually done in practice okay the receiver algorithms are seldom very clean and neat okay so we'll do the clean and neat stuff also but beginning with, to begin with we'll see something slightly ugly so that we get used to the way uh, the whole thing is going to work okay all right so the way i wrote it down my heuristic was to minimize the minimum dis the distance between minimize the distance between r of t and and sigma s of k well, a of k h of t minus k, k k for all vectors a okay so in that respect i defined a metric j a k for some a belonging to what xl right so you draw l symbols from your alphabet okay and define the corresponding signal that you would have obtained okay which would be what okay so basically this i defined as the distance between r of t and the signal corresponding to a okay so what is the signal corresponding to a summation a k h of t minus k t okay to be able to compute such things in the receiver clearly okay so a k is square brackets okay so clearly you should know h of t okay so you might know g of t because that's your transmitters uh, response but c of t you may not know okay and there are easy techniques to find it you sound the channel and you find c of t maybe okay so that's one way of visualizing it okay so you see already there is some ugliness built into the receiver right you have to do some well, i don't want to call it uh, uh, well, maybe it's not that ugly anyway but still you have to do some such things to figure out what the channel is and you have to do some real engineering it's not just sitting down in a signal space and projecting okay so it's different from what you have to do so you have to find h of t so you do you find that signal and then you do it okay so the first question is for a given a can we at least compute this fast okay so that's the first question i asked okay and i'm trying to reduce this to a form where it's all discrete and it's based on filters and samples and symbol rate calculations see if we can do that fast okay even that doesn't really solve our problem why suppose i can compute ja fast does that really solve my problem not really why okay, i have to do this for each a because the reason is my s hat is what 
it's not just based on j a it's argument of minimum over all a in xl j a okay so i have to not only compute j a for a particular a i have to compute it for every single a and that's going to be really really large okay so i might also is there a question no okay so if you have any comments also you're free to stop me and make any comments it's okay so so as l increases you see this becomes terribly difficult you have to do too many of these computations maybe you reduce the computation for j a but still there are more important problems that need to be solved before you can implement this receiver okay so anyway for the first step we'll try to see how to simplify the computations in j a and then we'll do proceed further okay to do that simplification uh i did the following okay so i wrote down after a while this expression for j a i wrote it down as er minus 2 times real part of summation k equals 0 to l minus 1 a star k yk plus k okay, so do i have enough room i think i'll write it down below k plus a double summation k equals 0 to l minus 1 j equals 0 to l minus 1 ak oh well should be careful here so i'm trying to be as consistent as possible with notation but usually it's difficult to be consistent uh, with notation okay so we'll try that rho h j minus k okay so i wrote this down and what was yk you obtain yk by sending r of t okay first what is er er is the modulus of uh, rt square so what's modulus of rt it's the l2 norm okay so integral mod square rt remember all these cases are complex okay so the modulus means something okay you can't just throw it out all these cases are complex and uh, yk i defined as r of t filtered by a matched filter filter matched to ht okay so ht not uh, gt okay so it's h star of minus t then you sample at symbol rate to get yk okay remember in practice there will be additional ugliness here in, in the form of delay and synchronization okay so there will be some delay be due to various things you, your g of t might have been non causal you might have delayed it per, uh, purposely purposefully for that your h of t might be causal there might be other things your receiver might might have to turn on before the transmitter got started so there will be all kinds of delays okay so you have to adjust for all those things and there are ways to adjust for it in practice so what people do is people send some tones initially and synchronize themselves first known signals you synchronize first and then after a while you send the actual thing so you have to do all these things all that is part and parcel of how the whole system will work okay so, but here in this neat theory i'm going to just write kt okay but you should know that built into it there's some approximation okay so yk so yk if you want to write down it will become integral minus infinity to infinity r of t h star of t minus kt dt okay so that's the symbol rate calculation maybe one can do it okay so the number of computations in this term okay is only uh, uh, around l computations do you agree okay maybe l minus 1 multiple l multiplications and l minus 1 additions etc okay so it's not too bad okay so it's complex so each multiplication might be more and all these things but all those things don't change the order right it's order l okay no you only order l and what about the next term the next term rho h is a little bit more um, involved so you take h of t send it through the same matched filter h star of minus t to get and then sample at kt to get rho h k okay so so if you are if the fourier transform for h of t is hf okay what's the fourier transform for h star of minus t h star of f right so that you know and what's the fourier transform for rho h k is it just mod h of square what 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 does the sampling do okay it has to make it periodic and all that no so it alias okay so this spectrum will actually be uh 1 by t summation m equals minus infinity to infinity mod h of f minus m by t square remember what is my 1 by t it's my symbol rate okay so it's coming from that how many that uh, the impulse strain sk the time interval between that that's my 1 by t okay 
so so this is to be expected right so you see the fourier transform for rho h of k is real and non negative okay so that is to be expected because rho h of k is a sampling of the autocorrelation of h of t okay so autocorrelation you know has that property and when you do a fourier transform on it it's going to be real and non negative okay so i would sometimes refer to this as sh of f okay remember the a better notation for this is what sh e power j 2 pi ft okay so that's a better notation for this remember that's the, that's the proper way of writing it but just quickly writing it as shf okay hopefully it's clear okay so the reason why i use s as opposed to capital rho or something is i know it's going to be a it's the power spectral density for h okay so that's the way well the sampled version so it's a discrete time power spectral density for h okay so that's why i i use this okay so this is also called the folded spectrum the alias spectrum okay i'll use all these things interchangeably okay so i'll say folded spectrum for h alias spectrum for h all these things okay so it happens because of the sampling okay all right so that's rho h of k and you notice rho h of k i can compute ahead of time at the receiver if i know h of t i don't have to wait and do that computation every time i can compute it for enough k and put it in some memory and keep it there okay so and use it even if i do that the computation of the second term needs how many order what's the rough order of the number of computations in the second term l can i say l l squared right so it's going to be l squared okay so about l squared computations okay right it's it requires l square and that's not nice okay so the reason why that's not nice is linear with l is okay okay as you transmit more and more symbols and your computations is linear with l anyway you have to wait for linearly more time to decode everything that seems reasonable but once it goes to l squared it becomes really ugly because then you have to wait for for every increase you have to wait for much longer before you put out everything okay so l squared maybe is not very nice in computation okay so that's what i meant by saying even though i have come from discrete time continuous time to discrete time which makes my computations look better i still haven't reduced it to a very nice form where i can at least do linear and l computations for each a okay so that's something i want to do and there is a wonderful way of simplifying this computation to make it linear in l okay so that's the way i'm going to introduce this next idea so you have to basically do what's called a spectral factorization on sh of f and that will end up simplifying this computation from l square to l okay so that's basically because of the symmetry in rho h and all that you really don't need l squared it's enough if you have l in your uh, computation okay so that's the that's the logic behind it but later on when we study the proper correlation and projection receivers in the signal space the optimal receivers the spectral factorization will show up in a wonderfully fundamental way okay so the spectral factorization is a much more fundamental and deep idea than just an idea to reduce this computation from l square to l okay but anyway this also is equally important and we'll go through it in that fashion okay so so that's the next few uh, next few things we'll be seeing so to how to how to do this computation ja in order of l computations and for that you'll see we need to do some fancy nice interesting spectral factorization okay so i'm going to give you the result first and then maybe uh maybe go through a couple of simple ideas for proving it okay so once again this is not a dsp course and if you have not seen spectral factorization this will be new to you and uh i'll urge you to go back and read through books and understand uh, understand what it is or at, at a more leisurely leisurely pace okay i'm not going to go i'm not going to do it in great detail okay so spectral factorization okay okay suppose i have uh so okay so i'll do it with this notation itself i won't change the notation sh of e power j theta okay which is what this is the this is the fourier transform for rho h k okay discrete time fourier transform okay this i know is real and non negative okay so any time i have a discrete time signal whose fourier transform is discrete time fourier transform is real and non negative it turns out 
rho h of k can be written as gamma squared k which is a which is a real constant times some signal mk convolved with some signal m star of minus k okay okay so this might be one can easily motivate this from several things what's greatest you can say this decomposition will be unique and you can force m of k to be monic causal and loosely minimum phase okay so this will become unique when you say m of k has to be monic causal and loosely minimal phase okay so it's possible to write down any discrete time signal whose discrete time fourier transform is real and non negative in this form okay gamma square which is a real positive constant times some signal which is monic causal loosely minimum phase convolved with m star of minus k so once you say monic causal loosely minimum phase that m of k becomes unique okay so if you don't say that there are various other possibilities to way of writing this down okay so this is the what's called the spectral factorization theorem is there a question ah loosely so minimum phase is uh, poles and zeros inside the unit circle loosely is zeros can be on the unit circle okay so so basically zeros on unit circle is okay okay i have to allow it i'm only saying real and non negative for sh of e pi j theta so obviously there can be zeros on the unit circle is no problem okay all right so what's monic yeah m of 0 is 1 what's causal mk is 0 for k less than 0 and loosely minimum phase is because loosely minimum phase means all poles and zeros for mk have to be inside the unit circle and zeros can be on the unit circle also so poles have to be inside zeros on or inside the unit circle okay so so minimum phase signals have a lot of nice properties okay so maybe uh, in a in a good course on dsp you might see all those properties uh what one property that you can easily guess is what what will be the inverse of m of k it will be stable causal everything okay so all these things you can also say okay so it's nicely invertible that's one property the other property which is more crucial is most of the energy you can show will be contained in the first few taps of mk so the actual result is among all signals which have the same magnitude response magnitude uh, frequency spectrum this minimum phase one will have the most energy in every beginning well, first few taps okay so i'm not stating it formally so basically what happens is in a minimum phase se sequence all the energy will be in the first two taps okay when i say so when you do energy of mk m of k squared right all of them will be in the first few taps so eventually it will die down pretty fast okay so of course there is some careful riders there about you you're only comparing among sequences with the same magnitude response among those the minimum phase one will have the will have most energy in the any first few taps okay so those are all very nice properties and uh, we will exploit those things maybe later on as we go along okay but for now how does this help us in simplifying the computation that's what i'm going to do okay and uh, so i'm thinking if i should do some brief diversion to spectral factorization now or no i think i'm going to show how it simplifies the computation first and then do a small diversion into spectral factorization and show how to do this in practice or why it makes sense okay so that's that's something i'll quickly do uh as we go along okay so the same result can also be specified in the z domain okay so in the z domain uh you can write sh of z as gamma square mz times what m star of 1 by z star okay so notice this confirms a lot of things you know about real non negative fourier transforms okay so if some se sequence has real non negative fourier transform okay real first of all forget about non negative real fourier transform then you know if you have a zero what else should be a zero 
the conjugate reciprocal should be a zero. If you have a pole, then the conjugate reciprocal should be a pole. That just comes about by fact that on the unit circle, the the Z transform has to evaluate to a real quantity. Okay, so that's something very easily you can show just based on very simple properties. The non-negativity will require something more. Okay, so it will require that if you have zeros on the unit circle, they have to be a zeros of even multiplicity. Okay, so that's an additional thing. Okay, so so in general, if you look at the pole zero plot for this, if you have every zero here will also correspond to a zero somewhere outside. Every pole here will also correspond to a pole somewhere outside. Every zero on the unit circle will have even multiplicity. Okay, so you see immediately why you get a nice spectral factorization like this. You take all the poles and zeros inside the unit circle and assign it to m of z and take half the zeros on the unit circle and assign it to m of z. m star of 1 by z star will automatically give you all the other things and there should be a nice uh, minimum phase. Thing. Okay, so I guess, I guess that's, that was the only diversion into spectral factorization I wanted to go into and I've already done it. So, so it's, it's very easy to motivate these things. Okay, so the question is what if sh of z is not rational? What if there are what if it's poles and zeros are too many, I don't know how many of them there are, then there are more complicated ways of doing spectral factorization and this result is true whether or not SH of Z is rational, okay. So this is true always, okay. If it's rational, the spectral factorization is easy to do. If it's not rational, it's slightly more confusing, but it can be done, okay. So anyway, so that's the only background I wanted to go to. So by the way, there's a good book uh, on signal analysis title is signal analysis it's available in tata mcgrawhill uh, publication so it's cheap also by popolis okay so if at all you think your signals and systems background is not as strong as you want it to be you think there are a lot of weak links this is a very good book okay it's not a descriptive book so it's not a beginner's book but it's got everything there and it's a good book to read okay. it connects connects up all the loose ends okay so so let's proceed. So I've done that. So so what what does it mean? What what happens to me? Okay. So once I do that, okay. So once again, the next step is to show some uh, some interesting uh, things that happen. Okay. So what we're going to do now to simplify the calculation further. Okay. One once more, it'll look a little bit ad hoc, but I'll come back and justify it later, and we'll we'll make sense of all of this as we go along. Okay. So right now. It will look uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit ad hoc. So what we're going to do to simplify this computation is the following. Okay, so we're going to take R of t as before. Okay, and we're going to filter with h star of minus t and sample at k t to get y k. Okay. Okay. So what did I know? My y k will be. What is my y k now? Okay, so the way I wrote it down, it seems uh, seems not too clear what uh, y k is so going to be. But anyway, y k is is going to be related to rho h. Okay, so do you see that? So r of t. So if if you want if you want to ask the question from s, what did I do to s here? I did this, and then noise got added here. Okay. Okay, this is a complete picture. Okay, so I, I had S. I'm interested in S. Okay, so maybe that's SK. So I should draw it as SK. Okay. So, so can we write YK in terms of SK? How will I write that down? Do you see that? Do you agree that will happen? Can I say this will be SK convolved with rho HK plus some NK? Can I say that? Okay, so this is this is okay, right? Most people are with me now. Okay, no problem. Okay, so actually I should say A. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to compute uh, J A. Okay, so I'm going to say A K. Okay, so if I do this. I'm going to get here. K A K convolved with rho H of K plus N K. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to just look at A K. It's okay. 
like so hold on for a minute okay so so you want to have sk instead of ak we can have sk instead of ak it's okay yeah so it's okay i mean fine i'll have sk if, if that's what you want we'll have that okay so that's fine so so a couple of questions i want to ask before we proceed okay now that we know something about this h star of minus t and h of t and all that okay uh so if you want maybe you can write it differently but what about nk what can you say about nk here yeah so as so you see that okay so the answer came very quickly maybe enough people didn't have time to think about it n of t i know is a white gaussian process okay but h star of minus t right when uh, filtered and sampled is not the same as a series of orthogonal functions right when i do that i'm not doing correlations with a series of orthonormal functions so nk i cannot expect to be white gaussian with mean 0 and variance n not by 2 i can't expect that because i know h star of minus t is not not it's not doing an orthonormal projection Okay, so because h of t, h of t minus k t, and all that are not or not orthogonal anymore. Okay, I don't know whether they are orthogonal or not. Okay, so the only thing you can say is, n k will have statistics. The power spectral density will be something like S H F. Okay, so P S D will be this. At least will it be Gaussian? Can I say it will be Gaussian? Yeah, it's Gaussian. Right, Gaussian filtered is still Gaussian. but the power spectral density will be the power spectral density of h star of minus t which is the same as power spectral density of h of t which will be s h of f okay so that's the first difference you notice here when s of k comes in previously when we had orthogonal projections my noise i was sure was uncorrelated between for different k okay so now noise is becoming correlated okay so maybe i should put n of k here instead of nk okay so Okay, just to be consistent, it's okay to have n k as well. Okay, so that's the the first observation, which is slightly disturbing, but that's okay. I mean, we'll we'll deal with it as we go along. Okay. Also, look at this guy. Okay, s k convolved with rho h of k. Okay, so what is rho h of k? Well, s of k goes from k equal zero to l minus one. What about rho h of k? It's an autocorrelation function. So what do I know about its properties? for one it will be non yeah non causal and symmetric about zero okay right is that clear okay so if i look at y of zero okay what will y of zero be forget about the noise term okay for for k equal zero forget about the noise term what will be this convolution for k equal zero okay right it's s and then you convolve with h with just a flip there is no slipping right so it's a solve so, but but still what happens all the ss are involved in y of 0 okay so the same thing will happen as you keep slipping the rho h of k through different uh, steps okay so so this notation is bad because i mean you see this and you want to substitute k equal 0 here okay in the convolution you shouldn't substitute k equal 0 what should you do you should write down the whole l equals minus infinity to infinity sl h of rho h of k minus l okay so that's what this means okay so that's why the convolution notation is bad here you can substitute k equals 0 not there okay you substitute there then you will get totally meaningless results okay so if you substitute k equals 0 you see the answer right rho h of minus l is not 0 see it's a symmetric thing okay so you notice here at at y k there is isi both causal and anti causal Okay, so you have both causal as well as anti-causal ISI as far as YK is concerned. Okay, so all these observations are important because later on we'll see receiver structures will be based on these observations. Okay, so so what I want to point out is this has got both causal and anti-causal ISI terms. Okay, so this is important. Okay. so previously we never had this problem right when it was orthogonal what were we sure of when h of t minus kt made an orthogonal set y of k will only depend on sk there's nothing more because i know my auto correlation would have been what would have been rho hk i mean delta right it's only one nothing more is there 
then my noise also is well behaved it's gaussian i can do my detection happily okay so you see when you do a non orthogonal projection lot of things change okay so first of all you keep getting anti causal i mean causal as well as anti causal uh, uh isi okay but it's symmetric and there is some structure to it okay so now i'll use some of the spectral factorization structure that i know what is the spectral factorization structure i know rho h of k i can write as yeah gamma square convolved with m of k convolved with m star of minus k okay so once you see that you see s of k convolved with m of k is going to be only a nice causal contribution but the convolution with m star of minus k is going to give me anti causal thing so one of the natural things to do with yk to get rid of the anti causal thing is what okay so how did i write this rho h of k gamma square times convolved with mk convolved with m star of minus k okay how do i get rid of the m star of minus k in yk okay so you notice the l square complexity is coming because of this anti causal nature okay so if you had only l you you won't have the l square complexity it's coming because of the anti causal nature so maybe i want to get rid of the anti causal part of my isi and that's being caused by m star of minus k so one thing i can do is what convolve with okay so i have s of k convolved with m of k convolved with m star of minus k okay so maybe m star of minus k think of it as some some other y of k okay no not y of k some z of k or whatever okay how will i get rid of a convolution term okay so if you have convolve with the inverse right so it seems like a natural suggestion okay right so if i convolve with the inverse of m star of minus k i can expect that in yk my m star of minus k will go away okay so that's the that's the way that's the way i'm going to think about it okay is that clear okay so that's that's the first suggestion that seems to suggest so to get rid, get, get to get rid of the anti causal isi maybe you should convolve with the inverse of m star of minus k okay what's the inverse of m star of minus k how do you go about finding it what's the z transform of m star of minus k you just now gave me the answer right it's m star of 1 by z star so what will be the inverse of that 1 by m star of 1 by z star will that be a reasonable filter yeah it will be a reasonable filter right why all the poles and zeros of m star of 1 by z star are where yeah somewhere outside so if you do 1 by they'll all come in so it's a reasonable filter so maybe you can implement it so it's not something too bad to think about is it clear so so it seems like one of the things to do to yk to get at least get rid of part of the isi with in a simple way is to filter with 1 by m star of 1 by z star so you'll see this has a lot of deep meanings later on you'll see uh, some orthogonality that happens because of this okay so we'll see that later as we go along but for now my motivation is to simplify the computation in the y case for that i'm going to do a filtering with that okay so that's the thing that's going to happen all right so so let me write that down next okay so what i'm going to do in my ja so let me remind you what this ja was okay so maybe i should just go back and cut and paste okay what was my ja there it is okay all right so 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 that seems to be a, a good enough suggestion so let's see what what we can accomplish by uh, doing this filtering so i'm going to take r of t i'm going to convolve with h star of minus t and sample at kt to get yk and this yk plays a role in the computation and then there is this rho hk 
and it seems like to work with rho hk a reasonable thing to do is to take this yk and convolve with and filter with 1 by I'll introduce the gamma square here uh, that's just for convenience you can it's just a factor okay so maybe I should write this down very clearly because it's an important step okay to get a zk okay so it seems like instead of worrying about yk and trying to compute j a in terms of y k if you go to filter it further by 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star the z k presumably has lesser isi and maybe that one can come up with a computation which is simpler than before okay so you'll see there's various ways of figuring it out and once you write the whole j a in terms of z k you'll see it will simplify to order of l computations everywhere okay so that's the trick okay so you do a filtering to get rid of the anti causal isi come to zk and then, the then try to write j a in terms of zk as opposed to yk and that will give you a nice computation okay and i'm not going to go through that step by step okay uh, i'm going to do that uh, fairly uh, fairly fast but i'll write zk in terms of yk first okay just to write that okay zk is what yk convolved with the inverse of m star of minus k and there's also a gamma square so if i write it differently i will get that zk convolved with what m star of minus k has to be yk okay i'll add the gamma square just to make sure gamma square is taken care of okay so this has to happen right yk convolved with the inverse of m star of minus k is zk so I can bring that inverse to this side so it becomes this okay so if you want you can write it down explicitly yk then become no z yk then becomes gamma square summation l equals k to infinity zl m star l minus k okay so this this requires some careful interpretation of convolution okay to write this down because it's m star of minus k you should know what it means in terms of convolution. I have written it down carefully and I get this. Okay. I can use the fact that m of k is causal and monic. So I know m of minus k will be anti causal. So I can use all that and simplify this computation. Okay, so I should write Z L, right? I'm sorry. Just keep going back to this old notation because that's the notation I've used in my notes and for some reason it's all mixed up here. Okay, Z L M star L minus K. Okay, so that's Y K. And once you make this substitution here, okay, so it's not clear how you quickly make that substitution, okay. So I want you to think about it. You can make that substitution, work with it carefully. It requires some careful thought and uh, the way it works out. And if you do that, J A will work out to the following expression, which is nice. Okay, J A becomes E R plus gamma square. Okay, so why am I putting two bars? It's just absolute value. Zk minus ak convolved with. Okay, so I should put two. Sorry, I'll, I'll write it carefully and I'll explain what the notation is. Square. Okay, minus gamma square modulus zk square so what is my uh, this notation when i say this for a signal xk what i mean is summation k equals minus infinity to infinity uh, modulus xk square okay that's my notation for that double arrow Okay, that is J A. Okay, so now you see there is there is nothing much uh, that's it's too disturbing about complexity in terms of L now. Okay, the reason is what is this? Oh, what is this guy? Zk convolved with this, so L equals 0 to L minus 1, 
a l m k minus l okay so that's a simple computation to do from zk it will work out okay so 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 you notice j a now there's no double summation basically it's only single summations but there's a zk involved that's all right and in addition you can notice few other things okay the first term is independent of a okay whatever a you have you have the same thing for the first term likewise the last term is also independent of a okay so if some of you are thinking about how i went from there to here it's not a simple one step uh, simplification you have to do a, quite a few things before you get there but you can back work back work from here to there and can be done, done very easily okay so do that do it later okay There's some completion of squares and all involved it's a little bit not too trivial okay but you can try it okay so but nice thing is those two terms are independent of a okay so what will happen to my decoder my decoder which decides s hat will have to do argument of minimization over a what only the thing in the middle which is zk minus okay i'll write it in this form summation l equals 0 to l minus 1 al mk minus l square okay so if you want to see exactly what that thing is maybe we can do that okay so i think you can restrict from k equals 0 to infinity you don't have to go through the whole k okay so zk minus summation 0 to l minus 1 al mk minus l okay so okay so suddenly this looks like each term here requires only both l computations okay so maybe the k equals 0 to infinity is disturbing you but that's okay i mean there will be only very few cases which are significant so we don't have to worry too much about it but anyway that that thing was already there in the previous uh, expression also so that's not going to simplify uh, anything for you but this is the one which is interesting so you've got only l computations inside okay so so go back and try to work with this uh, the j a in terms of z of k and work it back and show that it agrees with the same term in terms of y k it's an interesting computation to do but anyway it is ugly and you have to you have to work through it very carefully and show both of them are the same okay so it's a good exercise but finally we have a very nice expression at least for the minimization okay so you're not doing any fancy double summation it's only a simple summation over k equals 0 to infinity okay all right so that's the first simplification in computing j a okay any questions any comments something that's disturbing you okay Okay, so central to this whole derivation is the fact that rho h of k is going to factor spectrally. If it did not factor spectrally, I wouldn't have been able to do that filtering by 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star and get rid of the anti-causal part in y k, okay, then which gave me only a causal part. And you see here, what's happening here is what? You can see what's happening here. I'll draw, I'll draw a picture of depicting what's exactly going on. You'll see how it worked out. Okay, so it's a very interesting pictorial view of what's actually happening here and that's that's fairly important okay so let's do that next okay so I, i'll show you how this computation is going to work okay so you actually have an r of t which came from s okay so from s you did i'll simply write h of t okay then noise got added to it you got r of t what was the first step we did h star of minus t which we knew was not a orthogonal projection okay so you're not expecting all the isi to be removed at that point clearly it's not an orthogonal projection but what happens because of that you get not only isi on the causal side you also get isi on the non causal side because that's what you should expect right any if you, if you do uh, filtering and then sampling you will do aliasing okay which means the autocorrelation of h will get involved and autocorrelation is symmetric about zero you can't expect the uh, non-tecosal part to go away okay but then 
we took that autocorrelation, did a spectral factorization and got rid of the anti-causal part by filtering with 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star. Okay, so once I did that, I got a zk, which I now know has only causal ISI. Okay, so I'm going to write down more expressions for zk. We'll come to that slowly enough. And what is my decoder doing? It's taking a k, which is the candidate sequence from my constellation, then filtering with what? Filtering with what? Go back and look at this previous expression. It's filtering with what? Mz. Okay, so mk or mz in the z domain. And then what? You are subtracting these two and then doing well some square, right? Or energy computation to get Ja. Okay, so this is the pictorial view of what is happening. Is that clear? Okay, so so it seems seems not too not too difficult for each a. What is the real computation that you are doing? You are evaluating the filtering with m of z, which is just an order of l computation, and then z of k stays the same for all k. So you do the subtraction and do some square, you get j. So it's it's possible. There's no l square computation for each a. Okay, so everything else works out uh, quite reasonably. Okay, and uh, and now. To go, go ahead and implement the entire receiver, what should you do? You should repeat this computation for each A and then pick that A which gave you minimum J A. Okay, so well, this is not exactly J A. This is, uh, this is, I'll call it J A prime. Okay, so reason is, it's not J A, right? The way I defined it, this guy is J A prime. Okay, it's that guy. But it's equivalent in terms of metric. Okay, so this is what we are doing. So let's write down a few expressions. For yk, I wrote down an expression. It's what? Sk convolved with rho h of k plus nk. Okay, I know the statistics of nk here are not white anymore. It is PSD, what? Sh of uh, f, right? That's the PSD for this. Okay, it's not white anymore. Okay, so this is what I got. What happens when I, for zk, can I write a similar expression for zk? I'm convolving with the inverse of m star of minus k. So basically, I'm going through this filter. So that will give me sk convolved with m of k. Okay, so you can see that. That will cancel out. And the gamma square will also go away. And then the interesting question is, what will happen to n? Okay, any guesses? What do you think will happen to n? PSD is square of. Okay, so think about what happens to n or n prime. Okay, it's very easy to derive it. It's not that difficult. Okay, it will work out to something like n naught by two gamma square or something, and it will be white. Okay, so you can see that also. Okay, so you see why that happens. So we'll we'll see that as we go along later. Okay. So this 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star is doing wonderful things for us. Okay, Seems to be. Okay, Do you see what will be the PSD of n prime of k? How do you compute it? PSD of n of k multiplied by 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star times what? 1 by gamma square m of z. Okay, You will see one of those things will cancel with sh of z. You will be only dead to the gamma square. You will get n naught by 2 gamma square and it will be flat. Okay, Right? So PSD is? n naught by 2 gamma squared and it's white okay so maybe I did that filtering in a kind of a weird way to motivate the computations but what it's actually doing is it is getting rid of the anti ISI that we saw not only that it's also making the white noise the colored noise white Okay, so all these things are very nice, and they'll they'll play a crucial role in showing that such structures are optimal in some way. Okay, 
So we'll see all these things as we go along. But this is the overall receiver structure that we have finally got. And I want to stop here and pick up from here tomorrow.